Constantinople, been a long time gone. Constantinople, now it's Turkish delight on a moonlit night. Every gal in Constantinople lives in Istanbul. Now Constantinople, so if you've a date in Constantinople, she'll be waiting in Istanbul. Hello, Parker and GW. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Seneca Falls Convention of 1848. For all purposes, it was the beginning of a movement for the rights of women in America, because it was the first self-conscious and deliberate gathering devoted to the subject. So, when you think of the women's movement, you might have several images that come to your mind, such as... few people think of an image like this. We're talking pre-Civil War here. Thirteen years prior, to be exact. So it's old. Pretty old. Before we actually get started, it's time for a mini tangent. March is Women's History Month. I'm consciously doing this video in April instead of just a few weeks before because this isn't women's history. It's just history. It is of and belongs to all people. Katie's opinion. The issue with having Women's History Month is that it implies that women's history, the history of women, is separate from real history. Yes, women's stories have been left out of the traditional historical canon. However, proclaiming a month or even an area of study women's history doesn't weave those stories into the canon. And I think that as much as possible, and I realize it's sometimes hard, the stories of marginalized people need to be woven in to the larger picture of history. Nothing happens in a vacuum. But back to the main point. Upstate New York, 1848. First, London, 1840. The women's movement really grew out of the temperance movement and the abolition movement. Many women were activists and involved in these causes, and they began to notice that they were being treated differently from their male counterparts. Speaking privileges of women were often limited, and leadership roles were denied. Now, at the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London, which was in 1840, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott met. They were both refused seating at the conference based on their sex, and at this point, they began to notice the many ways in which women were oppressed. Eight years later, when they were meeting with other women, they decided to call a convention, quote, to discuss the social, civil, and religious conditions and rights of women, end quote. So they hastily organized a convention, it barely advertised it, and it was held just a few days later in that same summer. 300 people, both men and women, showed up. So pretty impressive turnout for lack of advertising and kind of hastily thrown together. Even the famous Frederick Douglass was there. And now, for a hold up, wait, what moment. None of these women felt capable, felt capable of presiding over the convention. So these are the heroes of the movement, the women's movement, the very first originators of this movement that includes famous speakers, activists, heroes, really. And it changed the course of history, changed the lives of millions of women, but none of them felt capable of presiding over the conference themselves. So Lucretia Mott's husband, James, presided over the convention. The most significant outcome of this convention was the Declaration of Sentiments. Elizabeth Cady Stanton wrote it and based it on the Declaration of Independence. It included phrases that paralleled the Declaration, the second most sacred of all American documents arguably second most, I suppose, after the Constitution. But anyways, it paralleled them, including phrases such as, all men and women are created equal. The Declaration of Independence has 18 charges against the King of England. The Declaration of Sentiments has a list of 18 injuries and usurpations on the part of man towards woman. Women. Man towards women. It also includes 11 resolutions. So everybody at the convention voted to adopt these resolutions, and they all passed, all 11 of them, but only one of them didn't pass unanimously. That one is that it is the duty of women to secure the, to themselves their sacred right to the elective franchise, the right to vote. This convention, this declaration, were so early that even the right to vote was ahead of its time. And typically, we think of suffrage as the very beginning, the very core and root 
of the women's movement. We think of it as what got the movement started, the movement's biggest victory, both real and symbolic. However, at this time, even these leaders, these incredibly progressive women for their time, they were unsure of this. An interesting fact is that out of the women who attended the convention and signed the declaration, only one, a Charlotte Woodward, lived long enough to cast her vote, finally, in 1920. So here's to people who think ahead of their time. Learn on. Uh -huh.